guys welcome to HSC goals this is a template for a baseline risk assessment and I've used so many of them but this one is the one that I like the most because of um, the properties that are in here and we're going to discuss them um, in parts so remember a baseline risk assessment is um, a process um, where we assess tasks or processes and look at the risk and hazards that are presented to the employees as they do their task on the ground so this risk assessment is an issue based risk assessment of a project that i did in zimbabwe and on this first page which is very important for you guys um are the tasks the activities hazards it is in columns that are going down so the first important thing is that when you do a issue based risk assessment or a baseline risk assessment it is written on uh, the same template the template that you're using in the organization is the one that you use for the baseline and the issue based risk assessment so on the day or the days that you're going to do those risk assessments make sure that everyone is involved if it is a project you need the project leaders the engineers the executives show floor employees the site engineers everyone basically has to be present so that their input is captured to make sure that all risks are prevented or mitigated to an acceptable level so if you see my point there it's pointing uh, on activity but before activity there's what's called an issue number which must correspond to your she documents file so this best uh, line risk assessment must correspond to your documents file that you have kept in your office there and I should tell you that this document is very large and it is printed on an um, A4 paper to make sure that everything is captured, nothing is missed. So after the issue number, there's activity. The activity here, the first one is site establishment. Then the third column is hazard, hazard which corresponds to the risk. If it's an environmental aspect, it corresponds to the environmental impact. Then the fifth um, column has got legal and other requirements. These are the laws that um, relate to this particular activity of site establishment and the hazard and risk involved. So that is the reason why I said I like this uh, template of a risk assessment it has got the legal and other requirements so that you can also comply to the laws of the the land while least you're doing your project or while least you're doing um, your work there then the next column um, denoted by s h e and q s for safety h for health e for environment and quality so this is simply telling us that if this issue, uh, if it is a, a safety, health or environmental issue. Then the next um, column talks about exposure, the next frequency and consequence, then the inherent risk. This is the risk that is there before any controls are put in place. When the controls are put in place, if you look at that for the first one, the current controls adequate number of people to fill, to lift heavy loads. Then another column again of exposure frequency, consequence, and residual risk. Uh, this one talks about the risk that remains as exposure, the frequency and consequence that remain after putting some controls. Then here the last column is propo the proposed additional controls if they are there or if they can be found but 
they may not be available at the time of um, doing this risk assessment so as you go down in the streets as it's just putting in place these um, items the activities the different activities go for this project the first activity is site establishment because um, the different contractors uh, were coming to to stay on site uh, so they they established some residential uh, area and they the risk of establishment had to be involved because it was practically a jungle or a forest so there's risk of snakes etc and obviously moving machinery and people into a new place also has a lot of risk someone can also get injured so when you're doing issue an issue based risk assessment you have to take um, note of everything from site establishment to the works themselves until commissioning of that project or handing over to the owners of the project so if you look down here as I zoom in um, safety issues health issues environmental issues and um, the various legal and other requirements for the environment uh, this project was in Zimbabwe so um, the relevant uh, law is Environmental Management Act uh, chapter 20 and section 27 and etc and in some references uh, the, there is a reference of uh, ILO standards if you look at this one about uh, working at heights there's an issue of uh, falling from a height and talks about ILO standards yeah, which are also very important so when you're doing a risk assessment you don't only take into consideration the law of that land but you also take into consideration the best practice if that is that your organization is affiliated to you look at um, the relevant laws that are in southern africa in neighboring countries anything uh, that makes the workplace safe for everyone so if you look at this one as i've told you it's a very big document and i like it because all things are involved from say site establishment now we look into the issues of back filling and compaction on the site to make those residential places then um, we jump into setting out and serving for the land of the project itself then as you go down there there are so many pages so that sometimes it looks like uh, if you look at this word like form work as a safety health and environmental practitioner you might not be knowing these things so that is why I said it's important that to involve everyone the shuffle employees um, down to even the gardener everyone who's gonna be on that project site uh, who's gonna end up there should somehow be present during the risk assessment so these um, activities are put uh, down by those guys who are going to be doing that place, hauling, congratulating, manual lifting, food preparation, working at height. And sometimes it looks like these guys keep repeating. Um, if you look at this issue where they're saying mechanical lifting, then you look at other places where they've also talked about... Um, wait, let me go here. Let me zoom in here. Rigging and lifting. It looks like there's a repetition, but really some of these works look similar but sometimes there is use of different equipment and different people will be doing that so it means that you're not missing out anything you would rather repeat tasks and activities in your baseline risk assessment because um the hazards and the, the risks that are involved might be different and the outcomes you know, of the injuries also may be different so it is it is better you kind of repeat than miss out anything so it's very very important you take your time doing these risk assessments um with everyone who's gonna be on site so as i look uh, on this one there's really no order in um how this thing's gonna take but sometimes it's very important to put out order 
if you look at this risk assessment of mine it started with site establishment then go to surveying of the land then earthworks and then um, construction works and stuff and stuff until we got to commissioning so it's so important i'm going to leave um a link to talk about the exposure frequency and consequence um that i've done before so that you can really see how you how those figures are put in place and how they are calculated so make sure that you really research into um, compliance the legal laws issues like that because every contractor who's on site must be good standing with the laws of the land concerning every type of task that they are going to do on um, on that site so guys this is it for me today i hope you enjoy it if you want me to explain further just dm me and i'll be happy to do another video that is specific for you thank you guys wake safely